Uh, hello, David. Hello. Uh, we're going to talk about photography today. Hello everyone, welcome to Flickr Inter Theory Views. I'm your host, Tadas Vinokur. Jacques Rancière once wrote in his book, uh, Descensus, critical art is an art that aims to produce a new perception of the world and therefore to create a commitment to its transformation. This quote emphasizes the fact that art can actually influence politics and activists can actually make art. And today, actually, I have a friend, a colleague of mine, uh, who does exactly that. His work actually influences uh, political transformation and allows people, observers, to think. So I introduce to you uh, David Montiglione, who is an Italian uh, photographer, a journalist, an artist. His projects have, been brought, uh, uh, have brought him new, numerous awards, including several World Press Photo Prizes and grants such as Aftermath, Aftermath Grant, European Publishers Award, uh, your projects have been uh, presented in festivals and galleries worldwide, including uh, Nobel Prize Center in Oslo, Saatchi Gallery in uh, London, Me EP in Paris, Mac, uh, Mac, Mac, Mac. Okay, um, and also I've I've seen your work on, on Times Magazine, and you uh, and you mentioned National Geographic and all the yeah. rest of it. So basically, what I'm trying to say is that uh, this kind of work, uh, David himself encapsulates a person that is able. To to uh, put theory into practice and does that successfully and very efficiently if his photos are actually put onto uh, Times Magazine. So <laughs> Eventually. Yeah. So uh, do you want to do you want to perhaps uh, like in a couple of sentences just summarize or perhaps like uh, give me some details on what is it that you think you're doing? Yeah. Uh, because I have only a couple of things that I was able to find on your website and yeah. I. And I consider you a journalist, artist, and whatever else. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, I mainly work with, like, photography uh, or with images, in a way, or technical images, if we want to say it correctly. Um, and I've been working in journalism in the media for the past 20 years, uh, though at the same time I've been producing independent work, in a way. So, uh, generally... I'm not assigned anymore to do things, rather I'm more often pitching stories and proposing stories to media, to magazine, to museum sometimes, foundation, etc, etc. So I'm not really sure that my work actually influenced politics. It has the potential, like photography have eventually uh, a possibility mm. uh, to create awareness, that's mm. for sure, mm. and in some cases or in the past, historically, they had the potential to influence politics. But the debate is very complicated about this. Yeah, exactly. For many we're reasons. actually engaged in that debate. So I'll, I'll begin with my first question. Uh, it's written in your biography that by using photography, you're able to study social issues and assess the relations between power mechanisms and individuals. However, in political, philosophical, and historical research, photography is often uh, regarded as a source that lacks concreteness. Uh, photography can be perceived as partial, incidental, and even biased. Mm -hmm. uh, when documenting social issues, how do you approach the question of partiality and bias? Perhaps you have some examples from your work. Uh, I'll also probably, if, if you allow us, I'm going to put some of the examples yeah, on the sure, video. Yeah. Sure, no problem. So, well, I, I think one of the first misunderstandings in this question is like that I use, so photography is a tool that's first of all, is a tool for an audience, but is a tool also for the practitioner. Mm -hmm. So for me, first of all, is a tool as a practitioner. Mm -hmm. So meaning that um, I like empirical research and photography allowed me to do this empirical research on social issue, conflict and other thing, mm -hmm. um, you know, personally, yeah, so yeah. just going there okay. instead of like reading about uh, so this is this is a photography is a tool for the practitioner. Mm -hmm. The second thing is like photography can be used for an audience, and there's a lot of debate how this can be used. There's a lot of uh, problem concern about photography, uh, and I think one of the main reason is because there was a misunderstanding in the production of photograph or in the process or 
the initial idea of photograph in representing reality. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a misunderstanding, not really clear why, there's a different reason, but that photography was the representation of reality. Well, actually, to that point, I have a quote from André Bazan, who says, uh, the photographic image is the object itself, the object freed from the conditions of space and time that govern it. No matter how fuzzy, dis distorted, or discolored, no matter how lacking in documentary value the image might be, it shares by virtue of the very process of its becoming the being of the model, which it is the reproduction. It is the model. Yeah, I mean, like, uh, eventually, yes. I mean, this, this misunderstanding of... Uh, you know, confusing the reality with the images of reality, um, it is an issue. And for many years, since the invention of photography, this misunderstanding actually led to the idea of, or the debate about the confusion and the bias and the problematic that photography can lead to. Mm -hmm. um, I think we are like in a moment of history when this is uh, like a little bit more clear and mm -hmm. eventually it will be... Uh, we understood that photography is not reality. Mm -hmm. It's just a representation, and in this case, an interpretation. Mm -hmm. And as an interpretation, it can lead to a different kind of uh, sort of conclusion. Mm -hmm. So when you're taking pictures, you're not representing objectivity, but you are actually representing in a subjective way. Mm -hmm. um, then the second question that arises into my practice is most of the time what you can do with photography is mm -hmm. can you change things with photography uh, i don't know why i mean this is like i'm struggling with this question because this is a question very peculiar to photography i don't understand why the same question is not made toward uh text mm -hmm. or literatures mm -hmm. or cinema mm -hmm. or you know mm -hmm. painting any form of you know, mm -hmm. representation mm -hmm. or any form of interpretation of reality. Mm -hmm. um, we have this misconception that photography, documentary photography, uh, should be able to represent reality, should be able to change reality, mm -hmm. should be able to change politics and social issues. Mm -hmm. The thing is actually that why we ask photography to do this mm -hmm. and not other form of, you know, representation like painting and, you know, or sculptures or movie. Well, perhaps that's the peculiar issue with photography because uh, it actually implies that there's a connection with reality, connection with the real, right? Yeah. So, so it should be, so it, it, it allows us to think as though this is a, a veritable uh, source of knowledge, right? And, but at the same time, it's, it's obviously a biased knowledge because people can take certain perspectives, right? Yeah. And certain, uh, uh, you know, angles. Yeah. And choose certain angles as opposed to other angles. Yeah, but I mean, this yeah. responsibility of interpreting this yeah. reality has different uh, actors yeah. in the process. Yeah. So it starts with like the photographer taking the pictures and yeah. deciding which is the frame and which is the composition, what is inside yeah. the pictures, what is outside. Uh, but then it leads also to responsibility of the audience looking mm. at the pictures that becomes a like a material object yeah, and yeah. he has an his own life mm. so the the misinterpretation of a photograph can actually be lead by different actors in the process mm -hmm. um, a good example is uh, um, pictures that have been being realized by perpetrators for example during conflict mm -hmm. with very specific intention of recording this mm -hmm. uh, or making fun of this uh, violence or this mm -hmm. crime and then the photograph became the documents or the witness to accuse the perpetrator so mm -hmm. the, the initial intention of the photograph was completely different from the result yeah. and the perception of the mm -hmm. photograph at the mm -hmm. end. Uh, we have various cases about pictures made during the Holocaust by the Nazis, um, some more recent example pictures made by the Ku Klux Klan yeah. um, during the, um, yeah, the, 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 the race issues in, yeah. in, in the United States. Uh, Abu Ghraib pictures itself, mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. one of the biggest examples of a picture that was made with a completely different purpose and mm -hmm. then it became like the symbols of the inefficiency and the violence and the crimes of uh, US prison, yeah, you know, exactly. abroad. Okay, so uh, the second question that I wanted to ask is uh, very simple. Uh, because you've traveled a lot and you've mm -hmm. seen many interesting places, you've just not very long time ago, you visited North Korea. Uh, yeah. Uh, so I want to just ask, uh, maybe there's an experience that actually stands out and maybe you can give us some uh, details. 
Uh, well, it's it's difficult. There are a lot of like occasion that stands out in my memory. I mean, like uh, in a way, this is also what photography does. Mm -hmm. Like it's a it's a like it's a tool to, for collecting memories first mm -hmm. for myself and then for someone else. Um, uh, and I think this is the most interesting part of taking pictures or, mm -hmm. or practitioner is actually having this camera is in a way a form of shield sometime to. Uh, very complicated situation, but at the same time is a tool of access to mm -hmm. people. Um, so I always like uh, imagine um, going somewhere in a place that I don't know with with people that I've never met um, without a camera and asking them to tell them mm -hmm. to tell them this, their stories. Mm -hmm. uh, I, they will probably think I'm crazy, but because <laughs> I have a camera, sometime this the stupid tools actually allowed you to approach people mm -hmm. uh, then it's your responsibility to decide how you want to approach people and what is the you know the thing that you want to take out of yeah. those people because in fact you are taking something out okay. so you have to be aware of that mm -hmm. um, examples. examples you want some examples uh, <laughs> some, um, something gobsmacking let, let's let's talk for example <laughs> about this recent work I've done for Time magazine which is uh, I think he was pretty successful yeah. in terms of like uh, imagery and uh, pictures mm -hmm. and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, it was um, successful a little bit uh, socially and politically. Mm -hmm. First, for example, um, I receive on a personal level, I receive an email mm -hmm. from a person that I've never met in my mm -hmm. life uh, um, expressing me this, uh, how she actually for the first time was looking at the people at the uh, migrants from mm -hmm. Central and South America as individuals rather than yeah. as a you know a, a social issue like yeah. a mass of yeah. people moving into United States um, so it's it's a little satisfaction in a way mm -hmm. but eventually I managed to change a little bit not I but my pictures mm -hmm. eventually managed to change a little bit the perceptions of mm -hmm. uh, you know people about the issue of migrations. Um, the second thing, which is more official, is actually that the mother and the daughter on the cover of Time mm -hmm. magazine, uh, they were invited as a guest to the State of the Union speech in the United States a few mm -hmm. weeks ago. Um, and so to be like a testimony of their, you know, experience, mm -hmm. their migration experience. So this is like a way how like photography going into journalism eventually may sometime affect yeah. uh, political issues or, you know, get into the field of politics in a very practical way. Mm -hmm. So uh, this woman who is waiting for to be granted citizenship or permission mm -hmm. to live in the United States, she was invited to the White House. To wow. express their testimony. There you go. <laughs> so it's a, it's a little thing. It's a drop yeah, in the yeah, ocean. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. nothing, but it doesn't solve the problem of migration, of course. But yeah, yeah it's uh, um, it's something like that. Other problem that I faced uh, most of the time the issue about like what can I actually represent with these pictures, mm -hmm. especially when you talk about uh, issue of violence or tortures or violence that mm -hmm. occurred already so you're not there to document the act but you're there mm -hmm. for the aftermath mm -hmm. um, then the photography is very limited in mm -hmm. a way mm -hmm. so how do you collect these things and how do you present them uh, mm -hmm. this is like a uh, regular problem for, for me and for photography and this is like what happened for example in the Caucasus mm -hmm. uh, in, the word, uh, in the work of Red Distal or mm -hmm. the work of Spasibo Okay, so I'm 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 gonna come back to the Times magazine cover yeah. and and the photography that you did there, but let's talk a little bit about uh, Red Thistle, um, where you explore the region of North, North, Northern Caucasus, yeah, uh, the region that sits in between of Black Sea and the uh, uh, Caspian Sea, and it's, it is it is a re region that by any count is very tumultuous, uh, uh, seeing a lot of social and political instability. But you, by using your method of concerned uh, photography, you construct a narrative of places and people, you say. Moreover, this work is shot uh, mainly on film. Uh, yeah. And as you claim, that faci facilitates the feeling of urgency. Uh, it gives mm -hmm. your photography a sense of realism, I would assume. Mm -hmm. what, so my question is basically, what are other methods involved in concerned 
concerned with photography or realist photography? Is there, is there, are there ways that you uh, interact with the environment? Are there specific ways that you talk to people or specific ways of taking photographies? Yeah. Like using the specific kind of film? Uh, yeah, I mean, like, uh, I think at that time it was using film because digital was still not so good mm -hmm. as it is now. Uh, that's one of the thing. And the other thing that I use a specific kind of film. I mean, the, it's not the film itself, but it's the format of the uh, the the mm -hmm. film mm -hmm. which is a six by six centimeter so mm -hmm. it's square mm -hmm. uh, so it's a little bit different from the traditional 35 millimeters which was used like for documentary photography for many years mm -hmm. like starting with the the famous Leica and Robert mm -hmm. Kappa mm -hmm. and etc etc so it's a camera that has like a square format film mm -hmm. um, and the fact that it's actually the, the frame, it's more constrained, mm -hmm. uh, actually give also you, you the sense of this like urgency in the country, not mm -hmm. in the situation, in the story, rather than, um, uh, you know, the, you are constrained, like everything which is in the frame, mm -hmm. it, it seems like to be constrained, so it cannot get out. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And this is like a little bit the situation that I felt when I was in, when I was in the Caucasus, so mm -hmm. you have all this problem or issues of violence and tortures, abducting, kidnapping, mm. and all these things. So, um, every, you know, sort of like activities, it's sort of, uh, it's under control, it's constrained, you cannot do whatever you want, you mm. cannot go out, you cannot do this, you cannot say that. Right. So this, uh, there is a sort of par parallelism in a way between the, the aesthetic of the, the pictures, the mm -hmm. format of the pictures, mm -hmm. and the situation in the story. So mm -hmm. this two uh, uh, urgency and constraint are you know yeah, related yeah, yeah, between yeah. the aesthetic yeah. and the continent. Mm -hmm. So yeah. more or less. Do you want to check if it's like yeah, still yeah, running? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think it's <laughs> like... <laughs> it would be funny if it wasn't. Yeah, it's it, it, is, it is. Okay. <clears throat> um, so my, my, my next question, uh, uh, yeah, Su Susan Sontag in her book mm -hmm. on photography writes, photographs are a way of imprisoning reality. One can't possess reality. One can possess images. Mm -hmm. One can't possess the present, but one can, one can possess the past. In other words, Susa, uh, in other words, Sontag thinks that uh, photography disrupts the natural flow of life. It shackles reality to one instance. Mm -hmm. In your work, uh, Chechnya has won, Russia has won. You export Chechnya and its social political development after the Second Chechen War. Mm -hmm. How do you think Sontag's thoughts could be related to this particular project of yours? Perhaps the ability to possess the past with the photograph is beneficial. That is, photogra photography, uh, photography allows for the re rejuvenation of the past that is hidden, repressed, worse stricken, mm -hmm. sad perhaps. Uh, what do you think? Uh, well, the the first thing is actually about why Susan Sontag doesn't think the same thing about uh, a statues yeah. or a painting. Yeah. That's that's the first question, in my opinion. Like, uh, uh, as as I said before, I don't really understand this like uh, um, expectation toward yeah. photography in yeah. a way. I understand the reason, yeah. but I don't understand the yeah. the the complaint against photography in a way or if you should have a complaint you should complain also about painting and sculptures and, yeah, exactly. and stuff exactly. like that um, so at the same time I don't so you don't, you don't see it's, it's it's a it's a benefit it's not a lack of uh, right? I, I I think like like all form of interpretation you have beneficial aspect and yeah. negative aspect yeah, yeah. I mean like I cannot deny that photography has a lot of like problematic and mm -hmm. the way they represent reality mm -hmm. uh, but this is not true only for photography exactly. right, right. Uh, so but at the same time so the beneficial aspect of uh, photography first uh, in the case of Chechnya of, of, mm -hmm. of the, the work you mentioned it's which is titled Spasiba by the way mm -hmm. um, it's uh, I've been working in what is considered to be like the aftermath Mm -hmm. uh, of a conflict. Yeah. So the conflict technically was already over. Mm -hmm. uh, there was no official act of violence going on, mm -hmm. except that it was a high levels of psychological violence. Mm -hmm. So people were so afraid 
of mm -hmm. what happened or the violence that happened that they didn't act in a human way anymore. Mm -hmm. So there was this, this form of repression in a way. Mm -hmm. uh, for the specific case of Spasiba, I was actually playing a little bit with this uh, ambiguity of photography mm -hmm. and ambiguity of the situation in Chechnya mm -hmm. at the mm -hmm. same time. Mm -hmm. So you have this, um, in, in, in Chechnya you have this facade of everything is fine now, yeah, exactly. the conflict yeah. is over, but in fact behind the facade mm -hmm. you still have a problem. Mm -hmm. uh, this is actually not very dissimilar to what photograph can do mm -hmm. uh, in both ways. Mm -hmm. So they can actually, you can see a photograph, you can interpret it, that thing in a way, mm -hmm. but eventually the photograph may be so ambiguous that mm -hmm. actually behind the photograph the story mm -hmm. is completely different. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Um, so I was playing a little bit with this like mm -hmm. role of, you know, uh, photography, this ambiguity of photography, mm -hmm. and at the same time, uh, the ambiguity of the situation mm -hmm. in Chechen itself. Um, and I have a, like a sort of interesting anecdote. When I did my exhibition here uh, at Sachi Gallery in London, mm -hmm. um, the exhibition was proposed like with a large format print, mm -hmm. uh, and I had very long caption. So mm -hmm. for each pictures, I had like very, very long caption about the story, what was the yeah. circumstances where the pictures were taken and were taken and et cetera, et cetera. But the, 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 the captions were not close to the, uh, to the, uh, to the photograph. Mm -hmm. So from one side, I want to give the audience the possibility of, uh, create a space of imagination between them and the photograph, mm -hmm. so to imagine what was in the photograph. And then if you want, mm -hmm. if you want to know the real story, you can collect like a little uh, paper mm -hmm. or um, how do you call it, like a folded paper yeah. uh, with all the list of caption. Mm -hmm. And there is in the specific work, there is a pictures depicting a, a young woman dressed mm -hmm. like a, a bride, a young mm -hmm. bride. Mm -hmm. um, and if you Days later, I was asked to be interviewed by actually a pretty famous newspaper, which I'm not going to tell now. But uh, and the journalist asked me to tell me tell him more about like the story of this young bride. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was very surprised because she was not a young bride. Mm -hmm. She was actually an actress dressed mm -hmm. like a bride. Mm -hmm. But because the problem of child marriage is mm -hmm. a is a common practice mm -hmm. in Chechnya. Yeah. He assumed, seeing the pictures, that she was a, a, a yeah. child bride, yeah, yeah. Uh, which was not the case. Mm. So uh, this, in my opinion, that is an evidence of, yes, the photograph may be extremely ambiguous mm. or cheating, but at the same time, the audience has a responsibility of understanding what he's looking at. Mm -hmm. uh, meaning he had the possibility to read the caption and he decided not to. Um, so, and this is also an evidence of the fact that actually a part of the uh, opinion or uh, conception that we have about reality, mm -hmm. it doesn't come by reality, but it comes from images. Yeah. So images actually construct the reality yeah. we believe in. Yeah. So they... they they appear beforehand, right? Yeah. 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 So my next question is very simple. I just, uh, I think it would be interesting to just know where do you find inspiration for your work? How, how, how does it happen? Uh, uh, <sighs> do you have like a mantra? No, not really. No, sometimes, I mean, like there are, there are like arguments or issues that I'm mm, interested in, yeah. like, you know, this, um, I'm mainly interested, there's something I'm struggling all the time between this relation between structures of power, power mm -hmm. and individual's life mm -hmm. and how these things actually collide in, yeah. in very different way. Uh, it may be because of religion, because of economical condition, because of geopolitical, uh, you know, uh, uh, sort of uh, activities, etc., yeah. etc. Et so, uh, and more or less all my work is related to this kind of mm -hmm. uh, sort of relation. And if we want a lot of photography, documentary photography, of being related to these things, mm -hmm. uh, you know, sometimes this, this is clear, sometimes it's not. But mm -hmm. um, so I don't know. I found inspiration because I'm curious. And so when I found something that I'm curious about, I start reading mm -hmm. a lot. Mm -hmm. And then at one point, my reading is not enough because I need this like... Uh, yeah. 
sort of like uh, empirical documentation uh, yeah. perception yeah. of things and so i decided to go somewhere but mm -hmm. it never happened that i go somewhere where i don't know nothing <laughs> i always go somewhere when i know 80 percent of the thing and then i'm ready to change my opinion but so you're not a spontaneous artist. No, I'm not a spontaneous artist. That's that's for sure. I mean, like then in the practice of taking pictures, it eventually yes. it may be spontaneous, but not. I mean, with the time, less and less. I so like I, that. I, Do you I, think somebody could critique you that you're not getting most of your experience by uh, by approaching it with a bias? Uh, I, I don't, eventually, I, I wouldn't say that, no, this, eventually, yeah. no, you're right, <laughs> totally. So yeah. I also get like, you know, um, uh, my information, like everyone from, yeah. you know, sources, mm -hmm. internet, uh, reading books, etc., mm -hmm. etc. Et but this is like, this is actually the, the, the problem and that lead also to, to the accusation of photography to mm -hmm. be biased. So one, there are like, there are two theories. One of the theories like, we are, we are overwhelmed by a number of photography mm -hmm. so that those many photographs, they doesn't affect mm -hmm. us anymore. Right. Because we see tragedy, for example, too much, so we're, we become anesthetized by mm -hmm. uh, images. Uh, at the same time, we also say that one picture is not enough as an evidence. So mm -hmm. we see the pictures, but we don't understand exactly what's going on. Mm -hmm. Even when you see a pictures of someone who has been killed, you don't really know how this guy has been yeah, killed, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. um, so one of the idea, which is not my idea, but I mean, like, it seems to be pretty reasonable to be believed in, mm -hmm. uh, exactly how it happened in a, in a trial, for example, mm -hmm. you need different sources. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can be cheated by one pictures you mm -hmm. can be cheated by 10 pictures but maybe you cannot be cheated by 10,000 yeah, if you start yeah, understanding right, yeah. what's the difference mm -hmm. this is more or less the same thing when you gather information to go somewhere mm -hmm. yes you will have a lot of like not reliable sources mm -hmm. uh, partial sources mm -hmm. interpretive sources or uh, you know propaganda sources etc yeah. etc et but then it's up to you to triangulate all yeah. this information and decide yeah which one is your point of view. Mm -hmm. um, and then the second step in my case is to go there and actually check if actually those sort of opinion or implication or blah, 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 whatever yeah, I've yeah. been learned yeah. is actually true or mm -hmm. not. Or in my opinion, true. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying, I'm not talking mm -hmm. about like, you know, we don't want to open the, yeah. the file of the truth, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's a very interesting attitude that you have. So you, you want to kind of a, a, approach the heterogeneity heterogeneous like this yeah. field of, of opinions and perspectives and you want to find out what what is it that you think about it what's what's your perspective right yeah and and so that's like that's the the radical probably concept of democracy right you have to deal with the conf conflicting perspectives yeah. right yeah totally yeah. absolutely yeah. absolutely um uh, this one i think is uh, gonna be an interesting uh question uh, from a theoretical standpoint Mm -hmm. um, I, I looked at your pictures, uh, and, and and I uh, I think that they have they possess great aesthetic complexity. I think that they uh, show people that perhaps are uh, well are thinking or suffering. The, the, you show the you show the a world that has been going through some some events or issues, mm -hmm. and and and. And they possess what 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 Roland Bart called uh, punctum, mm -hmm. and and for Bart for Bart punctum is a wound, a mark left by a pointed instrument. So it could be a camera. Mm -hmm. um, punctum is the detail that cuts through the homogeneity homo 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 of photography and makes the spectator uh, forces the spectator to wonder or think. Yeah. In Bart's opinion, a photo that tells the spectator exactly the way things are is a bad photo, yeah. right? The spectator it's should be... It's an unresolved question. Yeah, fact. exactly. It's a result, yeah. Uh, the spectator should be prickled by the punctum. Uh, sh this also, it, it sh this approach should be contra contrasted with pho photography that just tries to, like, shock or yeah. surprise. That's not exactly the same. And, and so what, what my question is basically this. Uh, is there a way... How, how do you make the spectator think? Like... <laughs> 
because because we're not talking about like alienating spectator. You're not. I'm not talking about like shocking the spectator. Yeah. Like that's easy. You can show them some something that is uh, horrible, and yeah. that person's going to be shocked, and and therefore it's not going to critically engage with them. Yeah. And so how do you make the spectator thing? Well, there are different ways. Let's talk about like the, the case of Time Magazine pictures. Actually, yeah. what I the, the aesthetic that I use is, is like it's not original, neither yeah. is exceptional. Yeah. Uh, it's actually a technique which has been used uh, often. It's mm. a form of portrait mm. on a white background, mm. and uh, I was actually using totally like I was appropriating a mm. technique which is from a famous uh, American photographer. Uh, Masters called Richard Avedon, mm -hmm. who years ago, actually in the 70s, uh, end of 70s, he did this book called In the American West, mm -hmm. where he decided to photograph like very simple people mm -hmm. uh, and removing them from the environment. So they, they pose, in fact, like they are, if they are modal. Mm -hmm. And this was actually very um, uh, sort of at the time provocative. Uh, and he was like very fitting with the idea of like Richard Avedon because he was a fashion photography. Mm -hmm. He was like used to photograph models or you know celebrities mm -hmm. uh, in a in a in a, um, in uh, in a studio. And yeah. he decided to export the studio so to create the space yeah. for normal for let's say you know, normal people. I don't know how to correctly define this thing <laughs> right. simple people, yeah, yeah, yeah. like not celebrity yeah. people um, uh, so instead of moving the person he moved the space mm -hmm. technically so I used the same approach um, I think this was the idea we had with Time magazine to try to convey uh, this idea of like migration mm -hmm. not as a mass of people like yeah. this unhumanized ideas that is repeating nowadays like a wave of migrations mm -hmm. uh, etc etc but rather to try concentrate on the story of the individuals mm -hmm. um, um, so the technique in, in fact is, is not new it's not original mm -hmm. it's very simple mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time it was efficient mm -hmm. in a way uh, moreover for the work i did with time i mm -hmm. also asked the people i mean the, the person that were photographed to draw a map mm -hmm. of their journey. Yeah. So at the same time, this was the space of the white background became a space of a participatory project in mm -hmm. a way. Yeah. So instead of representing migration with the environment they used mm -hmm. to be depicted with, mm -hmm. like so most of the time it's dirt, mm -hmm. refugee camps, yeah. uh, uh, horrible, uh, clothed, etc., uh, mm -hmm. etc. Cetera, et cetera, we decide to create a space where actually we can have a communication, mm -hmm. sort of like uh, sharing this sort of, even though for a few hours, this experience. Mm -hmm. um, so, and this white background became the space where they were isolated by mm -hmm. uh, the condition. So, at the same time, I think the pictures let you concentrate on the individuals mm -hmm. rather than on the person rather than on the status that they represent. Mm -hmm. uh, There's actually my, my last question that was exactly that about the Times magazine. And as you said, well, you traveled to Germany to photograph migrants who uh, fled the civil war in Syria. Yeah. Also, you traveled to the United States where you photographed uh, migrants who fled Honduras and Mexico. Yeah. Um, so you took dozens of photos of, of migrants. and. And, and you talked about the lady who told you that finally I was able to see them in a humane kind of way. Yeah. I was able to yeah. relate to them. So my, was, my last question was, was uh, very simple. Uh, how do you think other photographers should approach, uh, for example, these issues in order to, to sort of... No, well, you don't think no once, once again, there, there is no one way. Yeah, there's no I mean, one like, way. Uh, once again, I think what is important but here... But maybe there's a way to make it more honest. To render it more honest, the, the, the yeah. But what is the honesty in this case? Like, uh, is this is dishonest to, uh, you know, to depict to the refugee camp? No, the refugee yeah, camp yeah, is there. Yeah, I yeah. mean, like, so it's not dishonest. It's just like the, there is a. I think the problem we are discussing about is a problem of morality and yeah, ethics, yeah. which is a different thing with like, mm -hmm. you know, uh, a problem of representation. Yeah, not the same. So. Mm -hmm. uh, Personally, I'm not interested anymore in this kind of mm -hmm. pictures, which is trying to 
patronized in a way or uh, yeah, right. you know uh, put the audience the photographer the audience uh, in a position of you know privilege of looking mm-hmm. at people mm-hmm. uh, pity or yeah, yeah or feeling pity or something yeah. like that uh, so sometimes it's not possible sometimes mm-hmm. also those pictures are you know needed yeah uh, I'm just not interested anymore. But I don't think that other pictures are not, are not useful. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, uh, and as I said before, sometimes it's a matter of like triangulating this mm-hmm. kind of different kind of representation information sources yeah. to start yeah, having yeah, yeah. an opinion. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, this is like, this is actually what you do also in the academic field. When mm-hmm. you're doing a research or a paper, you actually consult different sources to mm-hmm. see who is. Uh, pro this argument, mm-hmm. who is against and why and mm-hmm. because, etc., etc. So I think this is also the approach that I'm interested with photography. Mm-hmm. Um, this has also led me to do uh, photography in a different way. I don't mm-hmm. have a specific style. Sometimes mm-hmm. I'm also criticized because I don't have a specific style in photography, an mm-hmm. individual style, mm-hmm. like uh, uh, artistic style. Mm-hmm. Uh, because I think what I'm doing is actually doing a form of storytelling and sometimes the story mm-hmm. actually the story is most of the time more important than my own style and so mm-hmm. the story have to be respected in a way mm-hmm. and have to be represented in mm-hmm. the proper way because of that specific story yeah. so if I want to talk about individuality of migration yeah. then I take portrait yeah. uh, then yeah. I ask them to write to draw the map yeah exactly uh, if I want to talk about the mass mm-hmm. of migration, which is not my interest mm-hmm. at the moment, but then I will probably use, I don't know, aerial pictures. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, but I mean, that's really depend how you want to approach things. Right. So do you the, think that, that specific, specific newspapers or journals or magazines, uh, they're at fault uh, for like maybe distributing photos that are oh, t- uh, totally. shocking? I mean, like, or, or, the, or the problem, the problem, this I think was another misunderstanding in the Sontag writing, mm-hmm. uh, to be honest. Like, uh, I think she confused the photograph mm-hmm. with the diffusion of the photograph. Mm-hmm. That's a very big difference. Mm-hmm. So, we're especially for, for the first book of Sontag uh, on photography, mm-hmm. we we're talking about the 70s or something like mm-hmm. that. So, she's referring to a period of time when photographs were widely used in, in magazine and yeah. newspaper and this was the only form of like diffusion yeah. of documentary photography at that mm-hmm. time mm-hmm. meaning like you shape the conscious of people with these pictures yeah. but who choose these pictures to be in the, in, yeah. in the magazine yeah. it's not the photograph itself jumping mm-hmm. into the magazine mm-hmm. There is an editor, there is a, like a publisher, mm-hmm. uh, so there is a full chain and structures of yeah. power that they have their own agenda, they have eventually their own propaganda yeah. uh, ideas. Like, you know, there is a like, complication when we talk about Western media, and we, we, we talk about agenda, when we talk about enemy media, we talk about propaganda. Mm-hmm. But then both of them, they have to make decision in a way. Mm-hmm. So, and it's not the photograph itself that is making the difference. It's like the context of the photograph, okay. right. where it's fitted, how, what's the text beside it, what's the commercial in the back page. Right. Yeah. But do you think you, you have enough uh, photographers, friends that do care about the story? Uh, I think so. I think, yeah. I, I, I think, you know, there is a consciousness. Uh, coming up mm-hmm. uh, in the world of documentary photography that changed a lot in the past years mm-hmm. like I will say the past 20 years probably from the 90s mm-hmm. uh, and it increased incredibly because of the crisis in the news world in the mm-hmm. media world mm-hmm. uh, so as soon as the media world had an economical crisis mm-hmm. uh, that became also a social crisis with all this idea of fake news actually uh, photographer and sometimes journalist and they became more aware of their their home responsibility mm-hmm. before it was like okay they send me there I'll take pictures I'll give the pictures not my problem okay. anymore yeah. Yeah. Uh, now there is I think maybe not for everyone but there is like more conscious about like I take the pictures than what I do with the pictures mm-hmm. what I want to say with the pictures mm-hmm. and there are different form of diffusion a lot of colleague or friends if we want to call that way it's 
they're actually thinking not to distribute pictures in a magazine anymore, but mm -hmm. decide to go into a museum mm -hmm. or right. rather right. to, right. in some cases, to galleries. That that becomes another problem of commodities, but that's, uh, that's uh, yeah, another another <laughs> issue. Well, lastly, I wanted to end with with something uh, quite 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 simple. So maybe the, what what kinds of uh, photographers do you like? Maybe there are movies that you like. What, what, oh God, no! Yeah, I just, the, like again, I just say I just say that I like multiple sources, so it's impossible like, for me to say I like this or I don't <laughs> like this. Or okay, do you have a favorite musician? Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm not this kind of like. I don't even have a favorite food, to be honest. Like that's great. So yeah. you actually you you try to triangulate the story. Yeah, yeah. totally, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Well, thank you so much for uh, discussing this. Thank with you, Tadas. Yeah, it was uh, a pleasure.